The goal was to get U.S. troops out of Afghanistan before the 20-year anniversary of the 9-11 attack. That deadline was achieved, but it came with a costly price. The United States making it official one year ago today. The Defense Department posting a photo of Major General Chris Donahue boarding a C-17 on August 30th, 2021, the last soldier to depart Afghanistan. The departure marking the first time in nearly two decades that the U.S. and its allies did not have troops on the ground. The withdrawal meets President Biden's deadline, but is plagued by chaotic and bloody events, including the attack at Kabul airport the week prior, claiming the lives of 170 people and 13 U.S. service members. And many of them were too young to personally remember the 9-11 attacks. President Biden faces criticism back at home for the withdrawal's execution, which only ramps up when he's seen checking his watch during the dignified transfer of the fallen soldiers at Dover Air Force Base. But the White House claims it's already exacted revenge, the day before taking credit for killing one of the ISIS-K planners behind the Kabul attack. It's an allegation that quickly comes under scrutiny, as few details are provided, accompanied by reports of civilian casualties. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, days later saying the Pentagon stood by the intelligence behind the strike. We know that there were secondary explosions. Uh, because there were secondary explosions, there's a reasonable uh, conclusion to be made that there was explosives in that vehicle. The third thing is we know from a variety of other means that at least one of those people that were killed was a ISIS facilitator. All of those claims are ultimately proven false. A New York Times investigation finding that the driver of the car was actually an Afghan aid worker loading water canisters, not explosives, and raising questions about the strike's justification and alleged success. It wouldn't be until several weeks later when the U.S. would admit that the drone attack was nothing more than a tragic mistake, claiming the lives of 10 civilians, including seven children. I'm saying that while the team conducted the strike, did so in the honest belief that they were preventing an imminent attack on our forces and civilian evacuees, we now understand that to be incorrect. The immediate concern one year ago is the hundreds of Americans stuck in Afghanistan who want to leave. A mission Secretary of State Antony Blinken admits is complicated by the lack of a U.S. military presence on the ground. It's a problem that will only get worse, as the Taliban is less than 24 hours away from declaring an outright victory in the country. The U.S. said it would be offering compensation to the families of the victims of the drone strike in Kabul, although to date no payments have been made. For now, the focus is getting them to safety, as 32 of the 144 relatives are still in Afghanistan, stuck in a state of diplomatic limbo. Thank you.